Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic week wherever you are in this amazing planet of ours. Hasn't it been a busy week for politics with the G7 summit going on in England? And, you know, I mean, for those of you that don't particularly care about politics, it is a big deal and it is something that, you know, hopefully they can thrash out a few solutions and sort of start to get to some answers and sort of, you know, get on well as good good fellows and that and, and ladies as they should be, that they should be there to sort of iron out the world's problems, not just to go there and blow their own trumpet and say, how amazing am I? It's a time now for the world to start to heal. So this week, the Secrets of Tarot card is the Wheel of Fortune. Now, this is actually one of my favourite cards because it, to me, it just sort of symbolises hope and positivity and life sort of finally starting to move forward again. In the Wheel of Fortune is elevation in money, and that's not the reason why it's my favourite card. It's more to do with the completion phases. After we've seen to have been going round and round and round in circles for such a long time, we finally have some completion phases. We have opportunities to sort of start to move forward again. And that's why I'm excited to sort of say, you know, maybe this just coinciding with the G7 is maybe a little symbol from above to sort of say that we're, we're through the worst of it now, that, you know, finally everybody can play in the sandbox together and start to find that they can share and share resources and share tools and ideas and whatever, and we can start to heal this world. And, you know, climate change has been a big part of what they've been talking about. So let's hope we get some answers on that as well. So let's hope for the rest of us mere mortals around the world that this means it's a time of change, of positivity, a little bit more money in the coffers, and the things that make us feel wealthy as human beings. And sometimes that's just the love and being able to spend time with our good friends and the people that we love the most. Okay, so we're going to move straight on into the the astrology section of the show. Each week I sort of feel as if I've got so much more to talk about. It's sort of like it just seems to be busy all the time. But this week I want to focus at the beginning of the show with Mercury, the planet of communication. Now Mercury is one of our dear little friends who appears to go backwards or what's known as retrograde three times a year for approximately two and a half to three weeks at a time. And when Mercury does this, it can seem to be the time when people don't have their listening ears on. It's like, yes, they're giving you lip service. Yes, 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 they're listening, but they're not really listening. They're so preoccupied and focused on themselves that they sort of think they're listening, but they're not. So Mercury retrograde will go through till June 22nd or the 22nd of June, depending where you are on this amazing planet of ours. And it is a time now of introspection. It's a time of reflection, going inside ourselves and just sort of having a little bit of a checkup, sort of seeing how our year is going. Are we really happy with the direction it's taken? Have we really got on top of our New Year's resolutions that we made? Oh, so such a long time ago now, a whole six months ago. Are we ready to sort of maybe embark on a new direction? Now, Mercury retrograde is one of those things that, astrologers sort of cringe when they see it's coming up because they think, oh, here we go again. People won't have their listening ears on. It's the time when communication doesn't flow easily. It's the time when you can have glitches in your computer system, your cell phone dies, anything that you can think of that's related to communication. We used to say in the old days, not that far ago, we were waiting on a letter in, a ma in the mail and half the time it never arrived during a Mercury retrograde. Well, that still applies to today's modern technology. It's the time when people get confused about appointment times, that they get mix-ups with travel destinations, things like that. And it's a time where, as I said, you really need to keep your eye on your your devices, the things that make the world go round for us, because this is the time if you're going to have a glitch in the system or something's going to break down or something's not going to connect or do what it needs to do, it's going to be now. So can I suggest take, you know, if you're going to be catching a flight or doing something that's rather important, leave that few minutes earlier so you've got that little bit of a buffer zone in case there is a glitch in the system that you get there on time. So if you've got an important conversation to have with a loved one or an employer or an employee, now may be not the time to do it because maybe they're not listening carefully enough to what you've got to say. And vice versa, maybe you're not going to be listening as well as what you could be in the midst of a very in-depth conversation as well. 
So can I suggest if it's not urgent, leave it till after the 22nd of June and then you'll have a much better chance of a better outcome where both sides or all sides of the equation are listening to what's being presented. It is a time where we really do need to focus on making sure that we are truly listening and pay attention when you're driving too because you can be very easily distracted under a Mercury retrograde. Even though Mercury is sitting in its own sign of Gemini, doesn't necessarily make the retrograde any easier. In some ways, I think it makes it harder because we feel so com because Mercury feels so comfortable here. He gets a bit complacent and says, "I really am listening when he's not." So you know, you just want to be aware of those sort of things. It can be a time of great breakthroughs, but if it had been me organising a G7 summit, I wouldn't have organised it in the middle of a Mercury retrograde. But hey, I don't run the world, so. Along with Mercury in Gemini, we also have Mercury holding hands with the sun. So the sun is where the, the zodiac signs are at the moment. The sun is in the sign of Gemini. will only be there for an, a, a little bit longer until around about the, the 22nd of June, until Mercury actually goes direct again. But the sun then will start to make its way through Cancer. So it's a time where we can have some really brilliant ideas. Things can come out of nowhere. We need to get out and explore our local environment if at all possible, if restrictions allow you to do so, that you can get out and start to enjoy life a little bit more and catch up with some family and friends. This is the perfect time to do so because the chatter and the conversations can be quite lighthearted. As I said, as long as it's not anything too deep and meaningful, you shouldn't have a problem. But make sure that you get the arrangements right too. It would be terrible, wouldn't it, to go out in one of your first outings for the year and everybody gets the date and the location and the time you up and everybody has a celebration by themselves that wouldn't be fun at all so for those of you that know a little bit about astrology you'll also know that besides planets we've got dancing around the zodiac wheel we also have what makes transits or we have aspects in a chart and the transiting planets mean that they're moving continually around the zodiac but they still make um connections there in a way of aspects whether they're static or in the, the chart as you were born your natal chart on the day of your birth or whether we're working with a transiting chart the planets still make aspects to each one, each other at the moment we have two major planets making an aspect to each other called a square now a square doesn't necessarily mean it's easy it doesn't mean it's impossible, it just means we, that both the planets have got to put a little bit more effort into getting a satisfactory outcome. Now sometimes this can seem as if it's tough, if it's hard, it's something I don't really want to do, it's making things more difficult for me. So when we're talking about the planet of Saturn, the planet that's the father figure, the, the, the one that sort of wields the big stick and says you'll, you'll do as you're told and you'll be disciplined and focused and, you know, get your studies done or make sure you learn from this lesson, is squaring the planet Uranus. Now, Uranus is the planet of the unusual and the unexpected and of happenings. Now, they're both in fixed signs, even though Saturn's in Aquarius and Uranus is in Taurus, they are both fixed and rigid. So that means that gives them an element of stubbornness there, of determination, of not wanting to back down, of sort of, you know, really standing their ground. Now, I do think that this is an interesting aspect to be happening at the moment with the G7 summit going on in Europe. Because it means that we've got, you know, Saturn being the father figure or the leaders of countries and nations coming together to have a chin wag about world events. And it's coming at a time where we're looking and searching for some major breakthroughs. So this could be where Uranus could come into things. Uranus could come in and create those openings or opportunities that maybe they didn't see coming and that gives a, a, a different slant or a different freshness to the negotiations and the discussions that are going on and maybe they're going to find some solutions to some of the world's problems by thinking outside the square or looking at it in a totally different way. And you say to me, well, that all sounds well and fine, Amanda, but I'm not at the G7 summit, so how does this really affect me? Well, how it really affects us mere mortals is that there may be things that we've been so doggedly determined to try and achieve that maybe now we've got to find a fresh approach of getting these major events or choices in our lives across the line. So maybe we need to think outside the square. Maybe we need to let our thoughts just wander and see what solutions we come up with. 
to me, it can be a time of tremendous breakthrough. It can be a time where things that have seemingly been stuck in our lives can now suddenly start to move forward. For some of you, that may mean some some windfalls of finances coming your way that's going to boost the coffers a little bit. It may be in the form of a new job opportunity or a breakthrough with sort of thinking about a way that you could maybe supplement your income by having a little hobby business or starting up an internet business from home. For many of you, it'll be changing direction. It'll be finally now that we're starting to come through the some way through COVID, that you're starting to see now what is really important in your life and how I'm going to go about capitalizing on that. For many people, it's been a, a real wake up call to say, hey, I can work from home and I'm actually really enjoying it. And it, it fits family life much better that I've got this opportunity to work from home. I don't really want to go back into the office, don't really want to get dressed up and go to work anymore. I found that I'm not really missing the social side of things, that we have enough social contact with our video chats and things like that connected with work that I don't really need to be sitting in a stuffy office and and, and being away from my family that when the, the, the day comes to an end as far as work, it takes me three seconds and I'm into family mode where before I had a half an hour, an hour's commute to get home. Now I'm sort of using that valuable time with my family and being able to do some of the things that I enjoy. So there's some of the things that Saturn Square Uranus could be bringing up for us. For other people, it's been about looking at where they're actually living. Is it suitable for this new regime going forward? I know a lot of people have made decisions to move to different locations or to move to locations that they couldn't do before because of needing to commute into work, where now they've got much more freedom of choice of being able to look at how they handle things. And for many people, it's been a real resurgence in family gatherings or family get-togethers and you know the amounts of wonderful stories that I've heard of people playing you know games of, of board games like Monopoly over the video Skype you know where they've all had a board at home got it out in the dining room table set it up with the device so everybody can see the moves and everybody makes the moves on their own individual board at home, but they're still able to share in the fun of having a game of Monopoly or whatever it may be to pass the time during pandemic. So people have become terribly creative in the ways that they look at, you know, managing their downtime, managing the time that we've been locked up and had to, you know, entertain ourselves. So it's been a time also of really understanding who you are as a person. So we've got Pluto and Capricorn to probably thank for that, that we've all had this luxury of time on our hands, that we've had the opportunity to sit down and look at about how to revamp or remodel our lives and remove the parts that we weren't happy with or we felt that weren't working for us and really be transformed and look at things in a totally different way. So we still have Jupiter sitting in Pisces. So Jupiter is asking us to expand our creative horizons. And we're not all going to be painters or singers or entertainers, but we can be creative sometimes just in the way that we manage the household or how we manage to all work, live and play under the one roof in these what have been very challenging times. But we've also learnt to be creative in the way that we put a meal together or creative in the way that we, we've handled the family budget. So there's many different ways of being creative. And for many of us, it's been a time where we have had some time to sort of sit down and watch those movies that we were always going to watch one day or, you know, have music playing in the background because we know we can get the job done, you know, and we haven't got a boss breathing down our neck saying, turn that radio off or turn that music off. You know, you're here, I'm paying you to do a job when you know you can do the job and sing along to your favourite tune at the same time. So it's been an interesting time. So for many of us, it's been a time where we've really looked inside ourselves and learnt who we are and where we're going and it's now time to talk with Kim in Orangeville in Ontario in Canada. Are you there Kim? Yes I am. How are you? Very well thank you Kim. Do you have a question I can answer for you today sweetie? Um, I was just looking for like a general reading. I was I was thinking whatever like yeah general reading. Okay. All right. The first thing that they're showing me, Kim, is that there's a number of changes, endings and transformations coming up around you. So in this last six months, would you say that you've been slowly sort of 
peeling back the layers of your life and looking at what you felt needed to be changed or what you could let go of or what you could say, I can put that into next year's basket. Because to me, it's sort of like I've got things in various stages of process that not everything's all coming to an end at once and not all new beginnings are happening at once. It's like different things are in different stages. And by that, I think it's a good thing because I feel that you haven't gone too fast in any way. You're allowing things to go at their own natural pace. And with that is coming a newfound confidence. It's not so much a confidence that you want to shout from the rooftops. It's more a knowing. I know I'm on the right path. I know that's the right decision. I know it's the right time to shut that door. And this will become stronger and stronger and stronger. So I'm hoping you're going to share with me, Kim, that you've actually either just gone back to some study or you're about to, because that's one of the major things that they were showing me. Is that where you're at? Are you looking at adding some skills to your professional bow? Um, I'm kind of trying to figure out like my spiritual. I'm just trying to think if I if I'm in that path, like for reading or tarot cards or something like that. Like I just I'm like really into it, but mm -hmm. I'm not okay. like taking any schooling or well, anything like that. I'm just kind of. Okay, but that's a form of study too, because if you're looking to get into what you term as spiritual, whether it be tarot cards and numerology or astrology or whatever, you know, most of us go into that not just for self-improvement or self-enlightenment. We go into it because we like it, we're attracted to it, and we feel that we can be useful with it, you know, that it, by learning a skill like that, that we can sort of help other people. So I wouldn't rule that out. I mean, you know, look, I don't think that there's necessarily a right or a wrong way to approach spirituality. I think we all need to, to, to approach it in the way that feels natural to us. For me, it was just something that was there. It was something that it wasn't something I got out of bed one day and decided I was going to learn. It was something I had always been a part of me. But that's not the same for each and every one of us. And it's sort of like, my suggested course is always to people is go to what you're attracted to. If you're attracted to tarot, then that's where you should start. Don't go and try and learn numerology that you're not attracted to because someone's told you that that's the best place to start. Always start with what naturally draws to you, you to it. And there's so many different tarot decks on the market today and there's so many different ways of looking at things and all those sort of things. My suggestion, and I've been teaching tarot for over 40 years, is find a deck that you like, something that you feel comfortable with, and then see what comes with that. Is there a book? Is there a course? Or is there just sit there and look at the cards and see what the cards are telling you? You know, it's it's a combination thing when we learn tarot. Yes, I believe most people should get some sort of training or learn the basics of tarot, like your ABCs. We all went to school and learned our ABCs and learned to count to 10 and learned our times tables. It's the same with tarot. But and once you've mastered that part of it so that you can look at a card and know it has a basic meaning, then I want you to start looking at adding your own influence to it. What is the card telling you? How are you feeling? Do you feel uncomfortable? Do you feel happy? Do you feel whatever it might be? Then add that to it so that then there's no right or wrong way to learn to become spiritual. It becomes a part of us. So I hope that's helped you, Kim. Yep, that's good. And I was wondering, too, about, I was looking at a brand new vehicle, and I was kind of, like, hesitating on financial, like, and when I pulled, when I pulled a couple of tarot cards, it's telling me, like, not to do it. But it's like, well, then follow that. I don't know. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe it's not saying definitely don't buy one. Maybe it's just sharing with you that this is not the right time. You know what I mean? You're in too much of a rush. Yeah. Yeah. You know, give and it another month, give it another two life. months and things <laughs> might be different. You know, you don't want to put yourself into a financial noose that you're going to be struggling every month to make the repayments. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kim, that's where we've got to leave it, sweetie. I've got to get on to the next caller, which is Ashley in Columbus in Illinois. Are you there, Ashley? Hello. Hi, Ashley. Do you have a question I can work with, sweetie? Um, I'm just curious on if, uh, if and when I'm going to get my children back. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Ashley, that the children aren't with you. 
Um, the first thing that they showed me as you were sort of explaining to me your question was that there is a number of endings and changes coming up. So I'm going to take from that it's not going to be very far away. I, I also sort of feel that when the decision is made that the children can start to come back towards you, it'll be rather sudden. It's sort of like you go from very limited visitation to all of a sudden it's like, bang, it's here. It's it, It's not sort of a gradual sort of process over a period of months. It's like two or three small visits and then bang, it's like literally like you've got the opportunity to take them back almost on a full-time basis. Is that what you're aiming for, is to have them rehomed with you permanently? Yeah, yeah because that's what yeah. I was seeing and it was sort of like I can't explain to you why there's been sort of like what I would consider a, a an about face, you know, like they've, they've reversed a decision. So that can only say to me that for whatever the reasons were that this situation came about, that the children and you were separated, that seems to have resolved itself or sorted itself out and that there's a different result now coming because of what's happened. So I'm sort of seeing possibly as early as August, Kim, uh, Ashley, I beg your pardon, where you can really start to look towards the future. But I don't want you to sort of hold on to the sadness and the bitterness and, and everything that it caused by you and the children being, you know, made to be apart. I want you to just focus on moving forward when you and the children are reunited. Like this is our opportunity to move forward in a happy, positive way and start to build our lives again. And I think that's really important because your children need to see you lead by example that, you know, we're, we're grateful, we're back together again. Now let's, let's find something positive and new and exciting every single day to look forward to and, you know, goals to aim towards and things like that. But it won't be very long when they're back with you where it's it's like they've never, you've never been apart. And that's a good thing, Ashley, because it's always difficult to know when you've been separated from your children that how much damage may have been done emotionally and not necessarily intentionally, but, you know, how children sort of tend to sort of not want to open up and reconnect again with the parent that they're coming back to for the fear of them, you know, not being there tomorrow. So I don't see any of that or very little of that with you and your children, Ashley. So that's a really good thing. But I think you've got everything in the world to look forward to and keep positive, sweetie. So I hope that's helped. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything else I can help you with, Ashley? Uh, no. Thank you. Okay, that was Ashley. It's always difficult when parents are separated from their children for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, it's a necessity thing or there's been an illness or a tragedy in the family. And it takes a lot of understanding and comfort and patience on both sides when we reunite a family like that with, you know, children coming back to a parent or parents and being connected again and all of a sudden there's new regimes and new systems and new way of, you know, handling a crisis and things like this. And sometimes children can take a long time to really sort of let down those barriers again because of the fear of them not knowing what's around the corner, that one minute they had a life this way and then all of a sudden they were in a different ex environment and had a new set of rules and, and, and ways that a household was run. So you have to make allowances for things like that. But hopefully more and more children will be reunited with a parent or parents if they've been taken away from them for many various reasons, because I truly do believe children need to be with parents. And having said that, I'm not necessarily saying that a two-parent family is better than a one-parent family. I think there's all different dynamics that make up what is a family and what is the best for that family. So there's no right and wrong in situations like this. It's about hopefully being able to keep everybody balanced and happy and to give our children the very, very best start we can in life. And I know as a parent myself, you know, you, you go through your parenting years and you wonder whether or not you're actually doing the right thing and you're teaching your child or children the right things to take forward into their adult life. And it can be a very difficult time because nobody gives you the rule book on parenting. You know, it's something that's a bit hit and miss and you do the very best you can and you hope that they come out the other side as well-adjusted, normal, successful human beings. That, that's all we want for our children is to be happy and successful. So it's a difficult job, and particularly when you're apart from your children. So I hope in this next seven days you find something to really be positive about 
and you know to to bring some values into your lives whether you've got children in your life or grandchildren in your life it's a time for being happy and for me that you know is watching movies or things together with children that show them some value systems and sometimes it's a trip down memory lane that that brings those happy times to us so i just want to share with you my latest creation from terry cote david cassidy's Drummer, she made me this beautiful Partridge Family bracelet, which is one of my all-time favourite shows. And I think it's a wonderful show to share with children that, you know, family values and, you know, how we fa fun families function in all different forms and shapes and sizes. But the most important thing is love and being secure and being happy. So I think we can all get on the pa Partridge Family bus this week and come on and get happy. Bye for now.